Hi guys, so today we're going to learn about CocoaPods. And uh, CocoaPods are basically third party libraries that you can use in your uh, Xcode projects to um, add in features. So developers around the world are doing some great work in you know, bu building all these features for you to easily integrate into your project. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel um, and spend time adding in these features. Um, you just sort of uh, have them and you can use them. Um, okay, so let's um, first take a look at where we can find some of these. There's a number of websites that uh, you know uh, bring a bunch of Cocoa Pods together uh, for you to browse. Uh, one I particularly like is CocoaControls.com. So we can filter here by iOS, and you can see a bunch of Cocoa Pods right here, and you can search for them right here. So for today's demo, uh, we've picked up one called AP Horizontal Menu. So let's go ahead and search for that and we'll see it show up right here. On this next page it gives us some information about this. So there's a screenshot of what the CocoaPod looks like. Um, it tells us which language it's written in. Uh, most CocoaPods are written in uh, Objective-C uh, uh, until now because uh, Swift is a fairly new language and to integrate um, Objective-C files into your Xcode project that's written in Swift um, there is a little bit of overhead that you have to do but it's not too much and we'll go over all that um, in just a bit. So let's click on download source and this will take us to a GitHub page. And over here we'll see you know, a bunch of documentation about the CocoaPod. And one of the great things about CocoaPods is that they, they usually come with a good amount of documentation on how to use them. So yeah, so uh, first to start off, we need to install CocoaPods on our um, laptop. So in order to do that, let's go to CocoaPods sorry, cocopods.org and we'll just run through the tutorial that they give us. So first thing we want to do is sudo gem install cocopod. So let's open up terminal and anywhere you are, it doesn't matter you know what directory you're in, you can just do sudo gem install cocopods and it's, it'll ask you for the password for your laptop, just enter that in and in just a minute we'll have cocopods installed and you'll see that you know this command is quite similar to Ruby. So if you've taken Ruby on Rails, um, or you know a little bit of, uh, a little bit about that, CocoaPods is built with Ruby uh, and installable with the default Ruby available on OS X. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so now we have CocoaPods installed. Um, so let's go ahead and create an Xcode project that we can demo this in, and we will call it File New Project. We'll call it CocoaPods Demo. And I'm going to go ahead and save that in a new folder right here. And I'm going to call it Demos. And I'll go ahead and save into that. Cool. So now we have our project right here. Now let's go into Terminal. And let's CD into uh, the location of the project. So I saved mine in Documents demos and CocoaPods demo. Cool, so now we can see all the files in that project. And now let's go back to CocoaPods.org and let's click on Getting Started. So in the Get Started tab, it tells us you know a little bit about how we want to customize um, our uh, pod file. And it gives us you know this pod init command to get a pod file ready for us uh, so that we can modify it from there. So this pod init command, you want to run it in the directory that the Xcode project is in. So you'll see, you'll see that the Xcode project is here. But if I want, if I cd it into a different directory, so CocoaPods demo, for example, right here. So there's no Xcode project in this directory, as you can see. If I did pod in it there, then it'll give me an error because we can't do that. So let's go back. And now we're back in the directory where our Xcode project is. And we'll do pod in it. And that basically creates a pod file for us. So if we do ls, we can see that the pod file is right there. And now we can open this with any text editor. I'll, I'll use nano pod file and I'll open it. And it gives us all of this uh, all of this code for us. So we can remove a few lines from here and uncomment a few lines. So first one we want to uncomment is right there. So oops. And you'll see this use frameworks line that we have right here. That's uh, helpful for integrating, you know, Objective-C CocoaPods into your project. So do be sure to have that. 
um, it'll help you going forward and once we have all of this we can go to our CocoaPod in GitHub right here and it gives us how we want to install this so we want to place this line into our pod file so we'll just paste it right in there and we'll press Control X and yes we want to save it and we'll press enter and we're back to terminal right here then we will just run pod install simple as that cool so now the pod is installed as mentioned we want to close it the xcode project first then we want to reopen it but to reopen it let's go to um, the location of the project in Finder and you'll notice right here that earlier we only had a CocoaPods demo.xcode project file um, and that's what we used to open it with but now we also have a CocoaPods demo.xe workspace file and once you install um, Coco, uh, once you install a pod file for a project then you want to use this file to open the project from now on uh, otherwise you will have errors so let's open the project using this xe workspace file and here's our project and you'll see now there's an additional target for pods and under pods you'll be able to see the pod that we installed and the files that it has in it cool so you'll see that this pod has objective c files that's why there's dot h and dot m right here so in order to integrate objective c files typically i'll show you how you do this typically in this case it's not necessary though um, but you know a, a lot of times you uh, sometimes you'll find cocoa pods that uh, don't have uh, a pod install function so oftentimes you'll just have to take the directories for the uh, code and copy that into your project and in that case this um, th this is something that would be useful so you don't have to do this uh, in this demo if you don't want to but definitely pay attention so um, if you go to file new file and you are on an objective c file then you can create a version header file and the way you do that is you type in the project name the code parts demo dash bridging dash header and that'll create that objective c file for you and I am stupid because I did that in the wrong location. But let's try doing that in this location. So we don't want to enter the pause location. So we'll call it the pause demo And once we do that, we will see this pop up right here. Now, this is really important. Um, so, the first time that you create an Objective C file in your project, it'll um, ask you uh, whether you want to create a bridging header file. And you want to click yes, you want to create that bridging header file. Um, sometimes this pop up won't come up, and that's usually when you've already created an, uh, an Objective C file. Um, and, um, you know, a bridging header file is really important because it helps link Objective C code to your. Swift project. So let's click this. And you know, there is a manual way to also add this file, but it's not fun sometimes um, because you know you have to configure your build settings with framework search paths and it gets really messy sometimes. So now you notice that there's a .m and, an, and a .h file that's been created. We just want the .h file so we can delete the .m file and we'll move that to trash. And in this file right here, um, we want to import any Objective-C files that we have. So we just look at the location of that and we see that this .h file is under this folder right here. So what we'll do is import and in brackets ap horizontal menu slash ap horizontal menu .h and we're just concerned with the .h files. So once we save that we're going to do command b to build the project and the project should build and this basically connects um, th these Objective-C files with their code so if you want to use it here you can um, so one um, 
so one thing now is that um, we don't actually uh, need this for this product because there's a cocoa pod and um, you know even though it's written in Objective C, uh, it'll work with Swift. So in that case, we can just remove this line from our bridging header. Um, but if there's no pod install for a file and uh, for um, uh, you know um, a certain pod, and you just have to place it in manually, like copy and download the files and put it in, then you want to use that bridging header to connect. And once you add in that import statement, then everything should work. But in our case, we can just go here into our viewcontroller.swift file, and we can do import ap horizontal menu, and you'll see that that import shows up. So that imports it for us. And now to actually get this demo working, we can go and look at the documentation that this CocoaPod has provided. So it's saying that we want to programmatically create this uh, menu, and it's given us some Objective C code. So this Objective C code isn't too hard to read if you know Swift. Um, but, I mean, it's pretty intuitive, at least at this level, but if you want to translate that over, there, it, there are a couple of um, websites that you can use to translate uh, Objective-C to Swift code. Um, so we can just take this code, copy it, and paste it into this um, website, objectivec to swiftcom and we can convert it. Now, word of caution, whenever you're converting between two programming languages using a converter, the conversion is not usually very good. So usually you do not want to do this and use this in your code. Um, if you ever want to, you know, you need help reading an Objective-C file and you want to convert to Swift code then, then that's okay. But try not to use um, this code in general. Over here, I've already, you know, looked over this code and tested it for you. Uh, so I know, I know that it works. So for right now, we're just going to copy it over. And we will place that right here. And cool, so this is green. That means that you know the AP horizontal menu is linked from the pod. And you'll see that over here it's giving us an error regarding the delegate. And that's because we haven't set the delegate yet, because we still need to read more of the instructions. Whenever you're installing the Cocoa Pod, make sure to read the instructions. So there's uh, this is giving us two ways to install the pod. One is programmatically and one with one is via st a storyboard. Um, we will use the programmatically method because that's um, usually more common with Cocoa Pods. Um, so once we've added that code, we want to add, uh, we want to make sure that our view controller is a delegate of the AP horizontal menu. So we're going to take this AP horizontal menu, dele uh, select delegate, and we're going to add it up here. So just where you have view controllers, we're going to put a comma, and we're going to paste that in there. So AP, AP horizontal menu select delegate is here. So now the error that it's going to be giving us is that we haven't implemented all the delegate methods. Let's see, what does it say? And yeah, it doesn't confirm to the protocol AP horizontal menu select delegate, meaning we haven't implemented all the delegates. To have a delegate, um, and to make sure that your class is a delegate of um, something, you have to have all that delegate's functions, uh, all of its required functions. So let's take a look at what this is. So this is the function that we need to implement. It's given to us. Um, in order to conform, conform to the delegates protocol, we need to um, put this function in. So again, we can just convert that here. And we can copy this over. And we can just put it in our file right here. And that error should go away. Cool. Um, if you don't want to convert it, one thing you can just do is, um, even though this is uh, the, the code that you're given in the pod right here is Objective-C code, if you go to your Xcode project, you can still you know, have that same thing appear. So you can type in horizontal menu, and as you type it in, that'll appear. And then all you'll need to add in is uh, the code inside of that function. Um, but yeah, cool. So we have this function now. And over here, it's just asking us to change the bar to let because we're not modifying that object. And then it'll probably ask us to do something, but I think that should go away. Yeah, cool. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we're doing right here. Because copying and pasting code has its advantages, it's fast, but we want to make sure that we're understanding what's going on, because otherwise we won't be very good at developing using this Cocoa Pod. 
So over here what it's doing is it's basically instantiating an AP horizontal menu object just like you instantiate it in any other language and you know you can instantiate it a number of ways so let's say we wanted to instantiate it another way we could say let h menu for example equal ap horizontal menu then we type a parentheses and it'll show us the different ways that we can instantiate it so there's different constructors for this object one is without a frame and you know, one is with a frame we'll do one with a frame so that we know where on um, our view controller this this is so then we're just you know making a uh, CG rec frame right over here, and we're setting uh, and we're instantiating this AP horizontal menu with this given frame. So then we're setting the horizontal menu's delegate to self, and we can now do that because view controller, which is self, um, is um, you know has AP horizontal menu select delegate, and then we're taking the values that we want for horizontal menu and we're setting them right here and the doc uh, documentation um, will probably you know let you know what this is sort of uh, so this is pretty much intuitive uh, these item 1, item 2, item 3 things are basically just um, what you have in these tabs up here so if we want to change that we can we can say uh, for example you know um, page 1 page 2, page 3, something like that, and, um, you know, that'll show up. And then the last thing that we're doing is we're taking the current view, so self.view, and we're adding a sub-view, which is this horizontal menu. Cool. So now let's go ahead and run this on the simulator. And success is a little big for my taste, so let's do iPhone 5S. And let's see. Cool, and here we have it. We have our cocoa powder right here. So it has page one, page two, page three, and then the different different items. So we can set all of these as we want with our code right here. And you'll notice that this function right here that we have basically prints it logs to the console so whenever we click something then uh, there will be a log to the console right here cool so there you have it we just integrated our first cocoa pod and you know there's a number of great cocoa, uh, cocoa pods that you probably want to keep track of and there's a bunch that are coming out you know um, every week uh, in, in case you, got, uh, you guys want to check back and cococontrols.com uh, does a great way does, does a great job of um, you know um, getting all of these resources together for you so definitely go and check that out and um, you know you, you'll often see that um, there's uh, different licenses on these so before uh, using it in your app you generally want to uh, take a look at the license um, wh wherever it says MIT license you're usually safe to use because th those are basically licensed for you to you know use them as you wish um, and yeah um, so uh, later on in uh, some of our meetings we're uh, probably going to give you guys a list of some useful Coco, uh, cocoa pods but until then feel free to you know um, mess around with um, some cocoa pods and um, put, put them into some demo apps and make, get them to work cool uh, thanks guys and see you next time